Hello. In this video, I'll be telling you all about Comet Ison. Now, Comet Ison was discovered in September 2012 by um, Russian astronomers uh, Nevsky and Novi Chonok. Uh, now, they were working for something called the International Scientific Optical Network, or Ison, and hence why the comet gets its name. So, Comet Ison was widely anticipated to become very bright, in fact almost as bright as the full moon itself. So in this video I will be answering the following questions. So where and when you'll be able to see Comet Ison? What equipment you will need to be able to see it? And, well, just how bright will it get? Will it live up to the expectations? So, first of all, do not believe any of the doom mongers. Comet Ison will not hit the Earth and will not cause any fluctuations in power or anything like that. It will pass at a perfectly safe distance of between 40 and 50 million miles at its closest point. Now, several planets get closer than that. So, where and when should you look for Comet Ison? Comet Ison is currently visible in the morning skies before dawn. Now, it's just about on the limit between naked eye and binocular visibility, but it probably looks a little bit better in binoculars or a small telescope. Over the next few days, it will come down towards the horizon in the morning, and we'll have a close conjunction with another comet, Encke's Comet. And they'll both be at roughly similar brightness, perhaps Comet Ison a little bit brighter. And the planets Saturn and Mercury are also in this close conjunction too. Comet Ison reaches perihelion, which is the closest point to the Sun, on the 28th of November. And it whips around the Sun quickly, and then raises high out of the plane of the Earth's orbit. After perihelion, in early December, it should be possible to see Comet Ison, hopefully as a naked eye object, in the morning and the evening skies. So it rises just before the sun rises, and it sets just after the sun sets. Over the next few days, it climbs higher and higher. However, it does get fainter. So as it climbs, it passes between the bright stars Arcturus and Vega or Vega. It also has another rendezvous with a comet. This one is called Comet Lovejoy. Now it, it too is currently on the verge of naked eye visibility in the constellation of Ursa Major. Due to the angle it makes with the horizon it's likely to be easier to see in the morning after perihelion than the evening, although it should still be visible. And as the time goes on, towards the end of December, uh, Comet Ison is likely to have dropped out of naked eye visibility and it, you will need a binoculars or a small telescope to be able to see it. In late December and early January, it passes two reasonably bright stars. The first of these is Eta Draconis in the constellation of Draco, the dragon, on the 28th and 29th of December. And then, on the 7th of January, it passes very close to Polaris, the pole star. To find both the pole star and the bright star Arcturus, you can use the familiar asterism of the plough or the Big Dipper. To find Polaris, the pole star, you can use the end two stars of the bowl of the plough or the Big Dipper. Use those as a pointer, and extend the line forwards, and you will find Polaris. It's the only reasonably bright star on that line. You can also find the bright star Arcturus by following the arc of the handle of the plough, or the Big Dipper. Now, it's very difficult to predict just how bright a comet will get. So when the comet was first discovered in September 2012, the orbit indicated it was going to pass extremely close to the Sun. 
comets are icy bodies and as they get close to the Sun they heat up and gas and dust can come off the surface and this gas and dust can reflect sunlight and that makes a comet brighter so because Comet Ison is going to get so close to the Sun this is why it was predicted to get extremely bright the comet could break up as it gets close to the Sun now if it breaks up before it gets to the Sun this could mean that we never really see it properly at all it could just fizzle out and we'll never see it if it breaks up roughly around the time it passes the Sun then it's possible we could see a lot of dusty debris and it could get quite a long tail before it fizzles away and it, well, it could go past the Sun unscathed during the summer of 2013 Comet Ison and the Sun were in the same region of the sky so it was quite difficult to observe the comet when it came out of its solar conjunction it did unfortunately look to be a little bit fainter than we thought for its position now projecting forward this probably means it's not going to be quite as bright as originally thought as long as Ison survives its perihelion passage uh, then I'm hopeful it will become a reasonably bright naked eye object in the first week of December so I think it's likely that Comet Ison will be a nice comet for the first week of December but maybe not spectacular however there's been some signs of a little outburst in brightness over the last few days so there's every possibility that it could become quite bright um, you never know maybe even live up to the hype so, thanks for watching, and I hope everyone gets to see the comet.